You got questions, we got answers. I'm here with the chicken doctor, and we had a question from Cooking with John Deere 4020 Seth. That's a long, long name. Seth wants to know hybrid chickens versus heritage, specifically Rhode Island Reds versus production Reds. Production Reds, will their offspring be as good as the parents? Let's find out. So Dr. Mike, let's talk chicken breeds and chicken breeding. Um, if you have a, a flock on your farm and you've started to breed them, what are some things to look for? Will they be as productive? What do you lose if you're not doing it right? Okay, well, that's, that's a good question. I get this a lot. I mean, is a heritage breed a better egg layer than the commercial breeds or not? Well, genetically speaking, they're all chickens, okay? The difference is we have selectively bred these different laying strains for more egg production. All right. Okay? The heritage breeds are some of the basis for the, for the strains that we have like the Rhode Island Red, Barred Plymouth Rock, we used to call them dual purpose birds because they were good for meat after egg laying for a while. Yeah, um, the cycle and, of life. Yeah, yeah. But, but then we really highly selected for the single comb white leghorn because one, it's a lighter bird and it's a very prolific high egg producer. Commercially, you get about 300 eggs out of a year on, on these egg laying hens. It's a lot of eggs. Yeah. And right now in Europe, they're trying to get 500 eggs per hen in 100 days. That's really crazy. Do you, 100 do you, weeks. I'm sorry. Not 100 uh, 100 days. 100 days. 100 but, weeks. 100, 100 like, weeks. Sorry. I was like, what does that break down in <laughs> three weeks. months? Yeah. In 100 weeks. 500 100, eggs in 100 weeks. 500 eggs in 100 weeks. So that's a lot of, a lot of production. Good look at it. Anyway, um, some of the heritage breeds, they're very inbred now because they haven't been outcrossed. That's why they're purebreds and that's why uh, some of them are very expensive. And if you look in the American Standard of Perfection, there's about 300 different breeds, standard breeds of chickens. Um, most of those breeds are not commercial used because they're, they're not that prolific at egg laying, uh, which, which is why they're expensive. Yeah. Because when they only lay maybe 50, 60 eggs in a season, compared to a hen that can lay 300 eggs in a, in a season, that makes a lot of difference. And that's where, you know, the difference between having a, a backyard hobby pet and making your living, like I do off of egg laying, you're gonna select for those breeds that are more prolific, lay more eggs, because I need to sell eggs in order to feed my chickens, in order to keep my farm going. You know, that mortgage doesn't care right. whether, you know, your, your chickens are extra fancy or more productive. Right. Yeah. So, so one of the breeds I like for backyard are what we call the sex lynx. Yeah. Okay, they're kind of a hybrid chicken. And you have the red sex lynx and you have the black sex lynx. And those birds have some good egg laying strain background in them. Yeah. And they're also hardy, they're a little heavier. Whereas a leghorn weighs three and a half to four pounds, maybe four and a half. You it's have birds a now that weigh, bird, yeah. yeah, now you have birds that weigh five, six pounds. But they're really good for, for that and they're very, very good feather cover which is really helps for the winter. So if you, if I get some red sex links and some black sex links and mm -hmm. I mate them and I hatch out little eggs of my own, that next generation, how am I gonna do? If I, okay, if I you, don't bring in anything new, I'm just, yeah. I, got a, I got one or two roosters on farm right. and a couple hundred hens and I wanna start incubating. Yeah, now you get what we call a high coefficient of inbreeding. The more you inbreed, the more you start decreasing some of those traits you're looking for. Reproduction is, is a trait, uh, the egg laying reproduction is a trait that it decreases over time when you keep inbreeding your brother, sister matings or close related matings. So you lose five to six percent of your, your peak egg production every generation that you inbreed. Without, oh, right. without so crossing, without outcrossing to another strain that's not closely related. Yeah. Gotcha. So five percent down in my production every time if you I just get a keep new using generation. Your, if you keep using brother sister mating from your previous flock. So even though you would, I would want to have a closed flock, and you know mm -hmm. I produce all my chickens on farm. Right. Uh, if I'm doing that and I don't bring in any new chickens, you know, and that could be as simple as talking to your neighbor and bringing in some of his birds. Right. But if you don't bring in anybody new, if you're shooting for this closed loop system eventually you'll just be making chickens who aren't making eggs. Exactly, you're gonna start losing your production. You'll get eggs, but your production keeps dropping every, every generation that you inbreed from brother, sister from the previous one. Awesome. Mike, this is some really good information. If you want any more information, you can head on over to the Yukon Poultry Extension website. 
Just head out, uh, look at the extension website. Yeah, we Yukon, look, Yukon Poultry Pages. Yukon Poultry Pages. Uh, if you have any questions about this that you would like us to answer in a future video, leave it in the comments section below. And until next time, see you out in the field.